Okay, so this is the second video for the math boot camp, Math Skills 2. How about your reference sheet while we're working out these problems? So the first thing that we're going to go over is how many significant figures are required in your answers. Uh, what this depends on is what you're doing mathematically. So there are actually two sets of rules. You have these rules written out on your uh, reference sheet under the significant figure section. Uh, so the rules depend on whether you're adding or subtracting. There's a set of rules for that. And then the next rule is if you're multiplying and dividing. So let's work on an example of each. Okay, so the first set of rules is if you are adding or subtracting in your problem. So if you are, your answer needs to contain the same number of decimal places as the smallest number of decimal places that are in the problem. So here we have an example of 15.604 plus 32.73. Go ahead and figure out what your answer is. If you type that in the calculator, it should be 48.334. So looking back up at your problem, this number has three decimal places. This number has two. So the one with the lowest number of decimal places determines how many we're going to have in our answer. So looking back down at our answer, we should only have two decimal places, but right now we have three. So that means you have to round. Uh, recall when the number behind uh, the number that you're trying to round, if the number is five or greater, you're going to round it up. If it's uh, four or lower, you're going to keep it the same. So in this situation, it's just going to remain 48.33. And the reason we had to do that again is because you only needed two decimal places in the answer. Okay, so the next rule is about multiplying or dividing, which this is a rule that we're going to be following uh, the most in this class. Uh, so when you're multiplying or dividing, your answer needs to contain the same number of significant figures as this lowest number of significant figures in your problem. So again, just find your answer and then round if you need to. In this problem, we have 15 divided by 3.02. When you type that in your calculator, you're going to get several decimal places behind this. Uh, so now the question is, uh, how many significant figures should our answer have? So looking back up at your problem, count the number of sig figs you see. So in this number, we have 1, 5, and these trailing zeros are going to count because there's a decimal. So there's 4 in this one. And then if you look at the next number, this 3 and this 2 will count, and then the 0 will count because it's a sandwich 0, so this one has 3. So the lowest number of sig figs is what determines what you're going to have in your answer. So we need to round this uh, to only 3 sig figs. Start from the left. So this is as far in as we can go for the significant figures. So looking uh, at the number right behind this 6, it's greater than 5, so we're going to have to round that 6 up to a 7. So you're going to end up with an answer of 4.97, which has 3 sig figs, and now it's rounded to the correct number of significant figures. Okay, so the last thing that we're going to go over in this video is probably the most difficult thing you're going to learn this week. Uh, how do you complete multi-step dimensional analysis problems? So from this point on, you've only done one-step dimensional analysis, but now you're going to do two-step dimensional analysis. So how do you recognize if you have a multiple-step dimensional analysis problem? When it gives you a prefix unit and it wants you con to convert to another prefix unit, that is your clue that you have two steps. So your steps are going to be, first, you're going to convert to the base unit, and then you're going to convert to the new prefix unit. So let's work out an example of this. Okay, so the example that we're given, we have 5.67 times 10 to the 10 centimeters, and it wants to convert it to gigameters. Uh, so, of course, we start our chart out with the number that we were given, and we are starting out with centimeters, and we want to go to gigameters. In a multiple step problem, we first need to go to meters and then we will go to gigameters. So centimeters is on the top here, so that means it's going to come down on the bottom on the next step. Meters is where we're going to go first, so meters will be the unit on the top. And then once we have meters, we're going to convert to gigameters. And then that means the meters will come down here on the bottom. 
So now that we have filled in our units, let's look at our conversion chart to figure out what numbers need to go with these units. Okay, so looking at your metric conversion chart, you see um, when we're dealing with centimeters to meters, we need to be looking at the centi row. So a 1 is going to go with our base unit, which is meters in this problem, and a 100 is going to go with centimeters, which is our prefix unit. So let's go fill those in the chart. Okay, so for the first step, we saw in our conversion chart that a 1 is going to go with our base unit, and a 100 is going to go with the centimeter unit. So now let's look at our conversion chart again to figure out what needs to go with the gigameters and meters in the next step. Okay, so if we're going from meters to gigameters, we need to refer to the giga row, which is right here. Uh, we see that a, a 1 needs to go with our prefix unit, which is a gigameter. And then our base unit is actually a really big number. Um, you can write out this whole long number if you want to, but instead you can just write the equivalent to 10 to the 9th is just 1 times 10 to the 9th. So that is the number that I'm going to put with my base unit, and then a 1 is going to go with the gigameter. So let's go fill those in our chart. Okay, so we said that a 1 is going to go with the gigameter, and then the 1 times 10 to the 9th is going to go with meter. So now that you have your units and your fractions filled into your grid, now let's type this into our calculator and solve it. So what we have going across the top is 5.67 times 10 to the 10, uh, multiplied by 1 and multiplied by 1, which you don't need to type in your calculator. So the top is just 5.67e to the 10th, and we're going to divide by what's on the bottom. Now we've actually had two numbers on the bottom. So we need to multiply these two numbers before you divide. So you're going to start a parenthesis and type in 100 times, and then this is going to be 1e to the 9th. So close that parenthesis up. So this is, this is still uh, the top divided by the bottom. You're just going to type this in all in one step just to save yourself some time. And when you do that, you're going to get an answer of 0.567. Uh, so following our rules that we learned earlier in the video, we multiplied and divide in this problem, so that means we need to count the number of the lowest sig figs in the whole problem. So if you look, we actually have only one sig fig here, here, and here. So our answer can only have one significant figure, which means we can only have a digit right here. So we're going to have to round that up to a 0.6. And then again, make sure that you have the right units. Centimeters canceled out. Meters canceled out as well. So we are left with gigameters, which is actually what we wanted to convert to to begin with. And so there is your answer uh, with the correct number of significant figures.